This video is sponsored by Into the AM. Miniature paintbrushing mistakes can be expensive, and there are so many tricks to help you save money and become a better painter. In this video, I'm answering your top miniature paintbrushing questions, as well as revealing the number one secret that has kept the miniature painting community in debate since the beginning of time. That one that I was previously wrong about. Let's spill some tea. Let's start with the most frequently asked question. What brush is the best brush? For this video, I bought almost every highly recommended Kalinske Sable hair brush. Then with a few other brands of Kalinske Sable hair brushes, I put all of them in an intense head-to-head -head competition to find the absolute best, most perfect paint brush champion. Okay, I didn't do all that, but I did use them a lot and I have thoughts. Here's what I tested. The Winsor Newton Series 7, Raphael Series 8404, Da Vinci Series 10, Chronicle Card Sable Hair Brushes, Chronicle Card Wolf Hair Brushes, Game Envy Brushes, and Redgrass Game Brushes. All the brands were tested in a size one and zero, or at least smaller and larger brush, except for Game Envy as they only have one size. After hours and hours of testing, here's what I think. My number one, hands down, most favorite paintbrush was the one that I expected, the Winsor Newton Series 7. It has the most perfect tip. The belly is large and holds a lot of paint. It has great control and I can get it off of Amazon, which as someone who is not very patient is a big deal for me. Second, the Raphael and Da Vinci brushes were neck and neck. The Da Vinci brushes were easier to control, but the Raphael brushes have a larger belly for more paint. In the end, I decided that I liked the Da Vinci better simply because they're easier for me to get a hold of. However, if you can get either with the same ease, then I like the Raphael slightly better. Next is the Red Grash Game Brush, sort of. I'm not a huge fan of the larger Red Grass Games brush because I feel like I go through them so quickly. It seems like the hairs are more absorbent or something and the paint brushes just get so full of paint so quickly. However, their tiny brushes are almost indestructible within reason. And I have used these so hard for so long and they're still doing great. Next is the Game Envy brush. The Game Envy brush was fine. It has a great tip, a good belly. The bristles are just too soft for what I like, making it more difficult to control. But if you prefer a softer sable hair brush, then the Game Envy brush would be great for you. Lastly, I tested the Chronicle Card Sable Hair and Wolf Hair Brushes. The Sable Brushes were fine, though hit and miss, whereas the Wolf Hair Brushes were very disappointing. Which is sad because the idea of Wolf Hair Brushes and the fact that they're supposedly better for the environment makes them a really cool idea. Unfortunately, I definitely recommend skipping these brushes. Let's take a minute to talk about this week's sponsor, Into the AM. Here's the thing. I wear clothes when miniature painting, and I assume you also wear clothes when miniature painting. So since you're probably going to be wearing a t-shirt anyway, why not wear a good one? Into the AM's t-shirts are comfortable, high quality, and come in a variety of styles including basic and really awesome graphic tees. Into the AM also offers bundles with three graphic tees for $60 and three basic tees for $45. My viewers get a further 10% off when using the link in my description box. All right. Back to the video. Okay, but what about synthetic brushes? Synthetic brushes are made from plastic or nylon. Synthetic brushes are great because you can get them basically anywhere and they are more cost effective. However, the problem with synthetic brushes is that they will always eventually begin to curve. For this video, I tested synthetic brushes from Monument Hobby Game Envy, as well as these previously purchased hobby brushes that were recommended by Sam Lenz. 
overall, for your money, the best synthetic brushes were these brushes from Hobby Lobby. They lasted a decent amount of time, a couple of weeks, and of course were very inexpensive, costing like $5 for five brushes. The Game Envy brushes were totally fine. They lasted a few weeks, they were fine. Unfortunately, I was unimpressed with the Monument synthetic brushes as they both began to curve after only two sessions. It is possible to straighten curved synthetic brushes by putting the tip in boiling water for 30 seconds, repeating as necessary. But if I'm going to have to put in just as much effort to take care of my synthetic brushes as I will my sable hair brushes, I would rather just spend more money and get a nice sable hairbrush that I know will last longer. Now that we have chosen the best brush, what happens to all the rest? My next statement comes with a bit of tea. All brushes are good brushes. That number one perfect sable, that synthetic brush with the slight curve, even at that one brush that looks like it caught its ways from the gates of hell, all of them are good brushes. It just depends on the job. Instead of throwing out paintbrushes that are no longer their best, I have created a five tier brush hierarchy, each separated in my handy utensil organizer. Let's start from the bottom, the dredge. The dredge are the bottom of the barrel paintbrush that still have the tiniest spark of life left in them. They are used to remove the residue from sanding, applying texture paint, or mixing paint on the palette. These brushes are for anything where the quality of the brush doesn't matter. This is the last stage in the life cycle of a brush. None of my dredge brushes are that bad right now, but you get the idea. The grub brush. The grub brushes are paint brushes that can still be used like paint brushes. While you can use grub brushes as general paint brushes, I usually use them for metallic paints, contrast paints, and washes, as these types of paint can damage the sensitive hairs of Kalinsky sable hair brushes. As for general work, the grub brush can be used for base coating larger areas, or one can trim off the damaged ends to create a large and small stippling brush. My grub brushes come in a variety of sizes. Again, this is just another stage in the life cycle of a brush. Secondary tier. Second tier brushes are brushes that are still pretty good brushes. They hold their shape, they have a tip, they're just good. But that's it. They're good. For me, most synthetic brushes start in the secondary tier of brushes, as well as sable hair brushes that have been around the block a time or two. These brushes can be used for just about anything. Base coating, layering, wet blending, glazing, edge highlighting, basically anything and everything. These are standard good brushes. They just aren't amazing. The final tier is the god tier of brushes. These are your perfect Kalinsky sable hair brushes. These are the brushes you dream about and mourn when they pass on to the next stage of the life cycle. But to be honest, I actually use my god tier brushes the most because that's how I like to paint. They just do everything better. They have a better point, better snap, better control. They're just more fun to paint with. The only subset of god tier brushes that I do actually reserve are my smaller god tier brushes, which I use only to paint the face. Since the face can be rather difficult, I want to make sure that I am using the most perfect, pristine brushes. Lastly, let's end the brush debate once and for all. Getting the tea a little hotter, the number one way that you can save money when it comes to paintbrushes is to take care of your paintbrushes, which is lame. The first and easiest rule is don't let your brush sit tip down in water. You'll bend your bristle and muck up the ferrule. 
Number two is don't get paint in the ferrule. The most common way that happens is when mixing paint on the palette or when dipping your brush into your paint. Only fill your brush halfway with paint to keep your ferrule safe. Clean your paint brushes throughout your sessions with clean water. And when you are done, clean your brushes with a brush soap after every session. Personally, I like to use the Sonia brush cleaner. After removing the majority of the paint from my brush with water, I'm squirting a little Sonia brush soap into my hand. At a 45 degree angle, I'm then pulling the brush across the palm of my hand in slow circles, spinning it as I go. Then I pull the brush back and forth gently to work the soap up towards the ferrule. Repeat as necessary. If it has been a while and my brush is very bad, I'll trap my brush in between the pad of my index finger and my thumbnail and gently pull the brush. You don't want to grip the bristles too tight. We don't want to pull out any hairs. Lastly, thoroughly rinse your brush with water using the same motions we did previously. Then shape into a point and let dry. But the hottest tea, the answer to the number one miniature painting debate is, do you store your brushes tip up or tip down? I have answered this question twice before and once I was right and once I was wrong. So a patron of mine reached out to Windsor Newton and got the final answer, which I am happy to share with you. The correct answer is when your brush is wet, you should store it on its side or tip down. But once your brush is dry, you can store it tip up. If you like this more educational content and want to learn more about miniature painting, colors, layering, glazing, how to plan your model, you should go and join me over on Patreon. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time.